Hey there, welcome to this episode of the Celebrate Brave podcast. I'm Nicole Trick Steinbach, the international bravery coach and your host. You are in the right place to learn everything brave. On this podcast, I share the best frameworks, the coolest conversations, and my own unique perspectives for how you can build your brave. There are two foundations to all of our conversations. Number one, bravery is a skill, not a personality trait. And you are already brave. Brave is how you create your unique, gorgeous, wonderfully fulfilling life. Brave is you. Let's go. You are the first to know. In May, I am doing something I've never done before. Let's do this chronologically. So in March, I held a free webinar to help people experience their feelings so that they could navigate a layoff with freedom, with confidence, with curiosity, and to land their next role quickly, with more ease, and with the results that they wanted. And that session was amazing. Most people experienced it through the recording. And so as a result, I've gotten a lot of emails about it. I've been staying in contact with people. And without fail... Those people who decided to start working with me after that webinar or to deepen the work of working with me after that webinar, they have asked me to please, please, do you hear the pleases? Bring the mindset, the feeling and thinking framework I teach my clients into the greater population. Now, I have been very nervous to do this. I have never done this before. I always start this one-on-one, but I've been practicing. I've been putting in the work. I've been meeting myself with commitment and with curiosity, and now I am ready to offer for the first time and maybe the only time a free masterclass on how to first identify what your brain and body is offering you about your goal and do it in a way that creates clarity with more ease and more safety than spinning out and complaining to your family and friends. Then Make decisions about what you want to feel, what you want to believe, and get so specific that there is no other option than for you to start actually creating what you want to believe and what you want to feel. And then lastly, break it down between where you are right now, what your brain and your body are telling you. When you think about and when you act towards your goal, what you want to be thinking and feeling and breaking it down into small, manageable 2% change shifts so that you reach your goal and you feel way less stress on your way there. You feel way more ease. You do not overwork it. You do not overproduce. You do not overthink. No. You do it with some gentleness, some ease, and deep, deep bravery. Like I said, I've never done this before, and I am so excited to welcome you your podcast listener as the very, very first to hear about it. We are going to be meeting on May 8th, May 10th, and May 11th. Check the show notes for more information. 
I will see you there. Get ready to clean up and declutter that mind so you reach your goal faster, easier, and with all the bravery you can ever imagine. You all, are you in for a treat today? I have got a fabulous guest, particularly because her name is also Nicole. So you know she's good people. So we got Nicole squared on the podcast. Nicole and I. It's going to be big trouble. Mm -hmm. It's going to be big trouble. You know what? I want to. I think this is going to be a really brave conversation. This is our third podcast together. It's true. This is our third pod. Third time's a charm, Nicole. Third time. Well, the first time was fire. It's true. That's still my favorite podcast of our season. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's be more specific. So it's this could have been an email as your podcast with your friend Alex. Yes. Yes. Beautiful lady. Amazing. Fire too. She doesn't play around. No, she doesn't. Um, And so we talked about layoffs because all of us had been laid off. I got a gold star because I've been laid off the most. I'm also the oldest. So catch up. (laughs) You know, give me time. Give me time. It's fine. (laughs) And then the second time you both welcomed me in to talk about career coaching. What is it? Is it a scam? And at the time I was like, absolutely not. It's never a scam. Um, Since then, I had my first experience with a coach, like, just not doing their damn job. So now I'm a little more nuanced. (laughs) Now you get why that was our question. Yeah. I was like, what is there? I don't understand. Now I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. So those links, dear audience, are going to be in the show notes. So those will be there and definitely listen to them. And um, one thing that my audience knows that maybe your audience doesn't know yet, Nicole, is that I have a stutter. I I struggle to visually identify people. My brain doesn't love to do that. And I screw up everyone's name because I get really, really nervous. So, beloved guest, yes. client, yes. friend, fellow yes. Nicole, Vafa Darden, right? So, okay, this is tricky. Ah! I, no, no, this is tricky because I logged in with my username you had it right. There's no N in my last name. That was me being rude. <laughs> so I'm the schmuck. This is not a you problem. Also, if it makes you feel any better, I mispronounced your name during my intro. So let's all put our judgment hats down. Maybe I did, did that. You? Yes, I did. I didn't stay the cool Trick Steinbach. Oh my God. I said, this is Nicole Trick Steinbach. Like, yeah. So maybe I did that with this forward moment of where it's Kismet, Nicole. Yeah. It's Vafadari. It's a lot of letters. Yeah. Nicole Vafadari. It's me. (sighs) Which is a whole part of your identity that is super exciting, potentially, that we'll go into. Oh, see, one of the things that, okay, we're, I said, let's do this chronologically. And now I'm like, let's bounce all over the place. (laughs) Um, One of the things that I just adore about our coaching is it's incredibly non-hierarchical. Yep. Yep. It almost made me feel uncomfortable at first because I was like, come, because <laughs> when you enter, you're like, come teach me all the things. <laughs> and I I also realized that partially because of my background, partially because of just learning of systems of the patriarchy, mm-hmm. I am just low-key very resistant to powers of authority. Um, and by low-key, I mean sometimes not low-key. And uh, – <laughs> And so it is so nicely facilitated um, to have kind of an equal footing, clearly still with the um, additional perspective that you bring, clearly just having a bigger sample size and talking to a bunch of women all yeah. around the world. But yeah, yeah. there's there's no bullshit. Uh, oh, can we curse on here? Yeah. Oh, a million percent. Oh, okay. oh my oh. God. I was my son. Do. Man, yeah. okay. So because so, you have kids as well. And I know that I our life, life phase is a huge part of our conversation. Yes. My son actually signed up for my emails and then like showed 
them to his little friends in middle school and in elementary school, which did not tell me. And then he was listening to, (laughs) he listened to a few episodes. Um, and he was like, mom, you know, or he still calls me mommy because I insist. I love that. Yeah. And he's like, mommy, you use a lot of swear words. Oh, sweet boy. And I was like, you're not my target audience. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah. So please. That's amazing. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. Because it's like. What you know, what I and this is a growth for me in the last 18 months is like getting out of the hierarchy with my coaches, but also as a coach, right? So, like, you, I am the expert on the coaching tools, correct? And you are the authority, you are in the driver's Mm -hmm. seat. And if my expertise is like, hey, it looks like, you know, heading north would be supportive, would be like the fastest or whatever, would be the most growth. And you're like, you know what? I love that idea. Let's go northwest. It's like, we're going. Right, right. Let's do it. And it's my job to facilitate that with expertise. Yeah, I love that. Me too. <sighs> All right, lady. So chronological. <laughs> yes. Over many okay. minutes in. So Nicole and I actually met because we went to a women in tech online event. Yes. And I can't remember which one of us saw the other person was like, Nicole's unite. And then we were like making fun and being cheeky. We were in the chat. It was so we fun. Were. It was the most lively, engaging chat. Like it was a very good virtual event. Mm-hmm. And then I just realized that the best pure networking I've ever done has just been connecting with people who I genuinely like and yeah. have some baseline things in common with. So I think I just stalked you on LinkedIn and was like, hey, saw you in the chats, thought you were funny. Let's be friends. (laughs) And that's how I snuck into your LinkedIn DMs in the least creepy, aggressive way possible. I was so excited. But that was a best practice, right? Because it wasn't creepy. I wasn't creepy. You weren't creepy. It was like, hey, we had a lot of fun in the chat. (laughs) And I think we both got – because that's when Abby Wambach – there was like a recorded session, a recorded conversation with her, and we were like losing our (laughs) – Yes. Chat. Yes. Abby, you're so amazing. Thank you for your book, Wolfpack. It it was very inspirational. I think I bought it like while we were listening to her. Um, (sighs) But yeah, and then we – started our podcast, we as in, sorry, myself and Alex. And I said, look, I want to bring this girl, Nicole on, this woman, Nicole on, whether or not it's for, mostly I wanted to bring you on to talk about career coaching because your title was brave international bravery coach. And I was like, the fuck is a bravery coach? (laughs) Like, I was just like, Because my experience with coaching had just been like random people reaching out and being like, Uh, would you like to talk for 15 minutes? And so I was like, well, I want to talk to her. Like, is this a scam or not? And then when we talked, also finding out that you had experienced layoffs and I was like, whoa, this would be amazing to have you on. And uh, I get goosebumps when I've re-listened to that episode and it was so organic and beautiful. I loved it Mm -hmm. so much. And I, our listeners were so positive to you and Carrie because you're both amazing. Carrie, oh my she's, God, she's amazing. Great people, great people. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's how we kind of connected. And then, you know, as I was kind of thinking through that episode and starting to feel a little uh, unsettled at work and at home, and kind yeah. of thinking, hmm. I think I need a career coach, but I also maybe am having what I now refuse to say is a midlife crisis. I call it a midlife assessment. Oh, uh, I love but that. Yeah, yeah. No I want taking to ass- over here. Yep. Midlife assessment. Mm. Midlife assessment. Uh, stop and kind of taking stock. And I said, well, I want to work with someone, but sometimes I can be an emotional mess And I don't want to be judged for that mess. I want my mess embraced and I want it harnessed. And my mind immediately went to you and I was like, hey, girl, question, uh, could we do this? And it was a very vulnerable step for me because 
as we've discussed, growing up as the daughter of an immigrant, Mm -hmm. my dad moved here from Iran after the Shah was ousted and he escaped as a refugee. And so we've always been tight with money. And so I was like, you mean I have to make an investment for myself? (laughs) What? (laughs) And so even working through that of like, Yes. Well, dang, girl, you're worth it. So all of those things bundled together and we just kind of jumped feet first. Yes, yes. Yeah. And you are worth that investment. Thank and you. And it is an honor to be the vessel, right? Like, it's so great. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. And that was something that really stood out from the very beginning is you said, you know, oh, these things are going on. These external things are going on. And there's this internal, but anyways, the external thing. And I'm like, let's talk about the internal thing. Yeah. And just how yeah. reflective you've been about who you want to be yeah. in this world. Because you do a lot of things in the world already. Yeah. And well, and and I for I think our first month of working together, I was like, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing <laughs> this all wrong. Like at, at one point, I was like, okay, I'm not reaching enough. Like in our sessions, you'd be like, what do you feel? Where do you feel this in your body? And I was like, Mm -hmm. shit. I've always prided myself on being pretty in tune with my body, but I hadn't even thought of that stuff. Um, And then in some exercises, like our our self-concept or um, some of the other work that we've done, it was like, uh, oh, I love the one – you did one exercise that was like, imagine a world where you can make up all your own social norms – Yes, that was the one alternate of the mo- universe. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like everyone should look up what this is or just like work with Nicole and do it. It's so much fun. Oh, and it was like, imagine this alternate universe where you can set your own rules. Um, mm-hmm. And I, we all came up with rules. Uh, two of mine that I remember, one was like, all of my clothes would perfectly fit. Yes. And I remember you being like, Nothing's stopping you from that. Getting your clothes tailored is not that expensive, which I have since done. Oh, um, yeah, just Love for a couple, it. just for a couple pieces. Um, and then the other one, I was like, there would not be a centralized government, or there would not be many, many countries, and everyone would rule together, <laughs> and more women would be in charge. And I was like, I think I'm doing this wrong. That has nothing to do with my job. <laughs> and it was, it was so cool to kind of dive in and see how different parts of my life intersect. Cause I think that's something mm-hmm. I've always struggled with ever since I yeah. first started in my career is what do I do to make money? And what do I do to leave the world in a better place? And what speaks to my legacy? And why yeah. do those two things have to be different? And I think that's kind of where we started is that concept that, of course, they have to be different um, and breaking through that and kind of questioning. Yeah. Yeah, because they don't. They don't have to. They can be. Sure. They don't have to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is where we begin to create that alternate universe. Yeah. It's so funny, Nicole. I have to tell you. We have something in common that I'm not sure I was aware of yet. We both are like ducks. I'm your coach. At no point in time did you say to me, am I doing this wrong? <laughs> I was just I, paddling underwater so yeah, you couldn't you see. Like, think I'm doing it wrong. Think I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> but I look totally peaceful. And I'm like, oh, my God, that is so me. <laughs> like sweat pouring down my back. It's, and it's so true. I look so calm. <laughs> it's so true. And I think I think it comes – Maybe this is a stretch, but I think some of it has to do with the fact that I was a manager at a pretty young age Mm -hmm. and a female manager managing Mm -hmm. people two to three times my age, right? Yes. And so you don't, especially in IT as a woman, although I say that I was lucky to have some really great male partners that I worked with throughout my career, but you just don't really show weakness in that way. My first consulting gig, it was, you were never allowed to say, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You had to tell me more about that or let me get back to you. Let me get yes. back to you. Right. Yes. And so yes. I think now the power and the strength, and dare I say bravery, in admitting 
you know what, I don't know, or I don't have it all figured out. Um, it's kind of, I think it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. I'm, I might be getting that wrong, but it's this concept of like, when you first start learning something, your confidence level is super high because you don't know all there is to know. And then the deeper into it you get, your confidence level is too low because you're like, shit, there's so much I don't know. And you actually know more than you think you do. Yes. And it, it feels like that, right? At the beginning, you're like, okay, I got this. I can do it. Uh, and just a little combo of that and the fake it till you make it. And coaching yeah. broke that down for me in a really positive way. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I had a very similar experience because I was, I think I was 27 when I was the comms lead for a board member at a major tech company. And I was sitting mm. directly behind the sea level as they were discussing the strategy and putting together their speaker notes. That's and I was like three decades younger, ten de- yep. like a 10 years younger than anyone else in that room. Yep. People, when I first started, and they weren't, I looked like an intern because Europeans go to college <laughs> a lot longer. And oh, sure. I, anyways, I'm super cute. So, um, <laughs> so it wasn't like they weren't putting me down. I really did look right, like an intern. Right. Someone would be like, I'd like a coffee. And I'm relatively clueless. And so I'd be like, oh, me too. But I wouldn't get up and get coffee. (laughs) This happened more than once. I love that the cluelessness led to like an inadvertent power move. Like, me too. (laughs) Yeah, me too. (laughs) Then they just kind of look at me weird. And then we would all get introduced, right? Because it's a major corporation. So like, we don't, you can't know everybody. Right. Right. And I would just be like, oh, oh. Oh. Okay. (laughs) But yeah, like you, you, you have to really watch your step, you know, and, and on top of the indoctrination that girls aren't as good as boys, whether Mm -hmm. it's implicit or explicit Mm -hmm. teachers who, at least in our generation called on boys three times more than they called on girls and boys were allowed to. And so it's just like the implicit and explicit and breaking that down and bringing that into every part of our life. Yeah. is revolutionary. And I truly believe that when I say revolutionary, it revolutionizes my life, but every life that I touch. Yes. yes. And then every ripple from there as well. Right. It's and so true. We can't track it. Right. It's just so powerful. It's so powerful. Yeah. Speaking of ripples, hard, Let's hard turn. Hard, I love it. I love it. Let's go. You made a really big decision. I recently. Did. At I the did. beginning of our coaching, we were really working on like how how is Nicole going to be happy where she is? How is this going to be fulfilling? What are her techniques? Right? Yep. And then things changed from the inside. Th- they did. They yeah. did. Uh yeah, it, it's it was really an interesting journey for me because uh my husband often laughs. Uh, he was like, <laughs> I think my <laughs> husband got some commiserative therapy. Like one of my <laughs> sessions, I need to I need to dedicate 15 minutes for you two to talk and I'm going to leave the room. Like it will be well worth uh, session time um, because he's We're like- We're going to do that outside of the session. Oh, I just want to meet okay. him. I want, all, I want all the connections. Our plan is to, to fly- and and visit you and other friends I have in your city and it's happening. <laughs> but he's like, I'm so glad Nicole now gets to see into my space, you, Nicole, because he will slowly kind of take in new data, think, kind of readjust, uh, mm. do the 1% correction. And I will take in new data, take in new data, keep up the positive facade, and then boom, I'm done. <laughs> or, I, or, or clarity has been provided. And I'm like, and left turn. Um, oh my God, Nicole, you said boom so loudly that my ears echoed and I just completely startled back. That was because that's you know what, what it felt like. I rolled in and you were like, listen. <laughs> I was like, I'm listening. Uh, yep. It And that's as startling as it is for every poor soul in my life when it happens because it is very, very abrupt. But it's yeah. also incredibly freeing. And oh, I don't know God. if you've noticed, but 
there's a direct correlation between you and two other people who've made really big decisions and me freeing myself up to make decisions. Yeah. I've, I've so noticed one other freeing. person in the group. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, to speak more plainly to it, um, I uh, last week gave my notice. Um, yeah. I resigned from my company. And, and as you said, we started with kind of let's do this investigation and let's look into things. And um, one of the things I really appreciate is you had brought up the option of, you know, hey, you don't have to quit your job and go be a starving artist to discover your inner ethos. <laughs> like you could collect a paycheck and slowly um, yes. in a sustainable way, explore these other options. Um, yes. And and that was kind of where our plan was going. And then I just had this clarifying moment where I realized, and, and I even had a conversation um, with some folks internally uh, with, with my boss um, maybe a little earlier than I was ready to, but kind of going through this list of, you know, I'm not really feeling the product that we make. I'm not feeling the process that it takes us and I'm not feeling the way we treat our people. Mm -hmm. And it was so succinct and so clear. And one of my favorite things that you said to me that I actually repeated to somebody else who I work with constantly, who's very impossible to impress. Um, <laughs> And he's just like a super profound dude. And I said, you know, uh, you said to me, you often say that you don't have time, but is it really that you don't have the energy? And what are you, what are you doing? Yes, your job might be easy, right? You might have flexibility. You might have all these things, but what is it doing to your energy? And I was like, oh shit, that's the right question. Yeah. Right. And, and especially when I look at, um, when I look at being the daughter of not only my dad who moved here and kind of had to start from very little, but my mother who was an educator still is an educator and came from a very poor Irish family, um, yeah. and had very little. And, you know, I'm making more than Definitely more than they were making at my age yes. by fivefold, right? As an educator, yeah. unfortunately, that's that's kind of an easy statement. But even my dad, who was an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to look at paper and say, I have a beautiful home. I have two beautiful kids, a wonderful supportive partner. I have food on my table and a roof over my head. And I'm making way more than a lot of people my age. Why are you being so unhappy? Yeah, And then you look at, Things like, um, you know, I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky person, and I was losing my temper with my kids. Yeah, um, Nicole, I didn't. I don't even know if we talked about this, but I was having. I don't think we did. I was having such bad back pain, like in my shoulder blades. Oh. I've gone to chiropractors, massage. I got cortisone shots in oh. the base of my skull. And on my shoulders and under my shoulder blades and did two series of it. I got a back x-ray because I was like legit worried that something was going wrong. Um, oh, my gosh. I, I haven't had back pain for the past like four weeks. Like it's just – real? I'm for real. I am for real. I just thought about it the other day. I was like, I think I do need a new bed. Wow. Uh, there's that. <laughs> but I literally um, – I haven't – I haven't had back pain like I used to. And it's just so much of this, like your body takes on and your your spirit and your mind take on so much of this pressure. Yeah. And so when you make this decision, um, like I've had the most fun telling people I have no idea where I'm going. And they're just like, most people are like, oh my God, I'm so jealous. <laughs> wow. That's like yes. the number one response. They're like, so you don't know what wow. you're going to do? And I was like, yeah, I'm just kind of pausing. And and I always preface with, I have the privilege to be able to financially do this because yeah. it is not lost on me that this is a very privileged position that yes. I am in. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I then say, I am taking time to really reassess what I want my legacy to be. And if that is baked into my career or if there's a combination of the two, 
Um, mm-hmm. But my family, my mental health, my physical health, um, and my energy every day are non-negotiables. And I just need to find something that allows me to be that and not be any smaller than that. So, I know. Wow. I know. It's big. It's it's deep and it's beautiful and it's big and it's real and it's a privilege that I want for all of us. I, all of us. I, I agree. It's it's this weird thing where you're taught that, you know, you go and you hustle and you make good money and provide for your family. And I think there's this other question of, um, you know, for what? And I think my dad will get a kick out of this. I'm like very <laughs> hard rolling my eyes to the left. Like they're, they maybe won't come back from the back of my head. Uh, but he always used to tell me, like most parents, you'll understand someday when you have children. But one of the questions that you kind of asked uh, kind of as in preparation for this was like, who's one of your brave role models? And for the longest time growing up, it was my parents. Um, you know, yeah. my very hardworking, loving, caring parents who in Texas where public education was garbage, saved their mm. money to send me to private school. My dad, who continued to reinforce his culture and provide for our family, and my mother, who did the same, went back and got her PhD to become a principal. Oh. Um, and all of these things homeschooled my brother, who needed um, special learning accommodations, and all of these things. And it's crazy because I realize my the the people that fuel me to be brave now are my children yeah. and my husband. And I look at them and I think, you know, my daughter sits there and says, well, I want to be an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, that's great, Cora. You should do that. You have the passion and drive. Um and then I was actually just recently before this, she's home today. And I said, Cora, what are you drawing? And she said, well, the picture's a little sad. And I said, why is it sad? And she said, well, this is a picture of somebody bringing a gun and shooting people. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I had to stop and talk to my five-year-old about yeah. How people have guns and how some people are working really hard to fix that. And <clears throat> it just hits you in the teeth. Yeah. yeah. And it makes, it brings so many things into perspective. And so that's what I'm the most excited to explore is, yeah. is you know, my work on the school board as a member of the Board of Education what do I do there? And is that the way that brings that fulfillment to me? Can I grow on that? Or is that good in its container? And what are the other things that I can help grow? Mm. Um, I love mentoring people. It, you know, So all of those things, I think the time for people to stop and really think about what matters is so overlooked in this age yes. of, you know, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Not, not who are you being? Yes, right? I had never realized how obsessive Americans were about. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. Until I was raising kids in Germany, and like that is just not a question. It literally is right. not a question. Now, later on in life, they're like hammered with it, but <laughs> when they're super young, it's just not a question. And um, someone recently time is made up. So like in the last 11 years said, I love to ask my kids, what problem do you want to solve? Or what do you want to create? And I really love to put that in the world. And that's something that my kids and I have spoken about. Nicole, there was this moment that really stood out to me. Um, And when I I, like here, it's, it's you and me right now having a podcast conversation, right? And when I'm in a coach position, I'm I'm much more curious and and just noticing. And I have my emotional responses usually afterwards, unless I'm surprised, right? Mm-hmm. Surprised or delighted. Yeah. Um, you looked out your window to the side, and your kids were coming home. Mm-hmm. Somebody had picked up your kids, 
and we're bringing them home. And your entire posture changed. Mm. And I said, oh, what's going on? You're like, my kids are coming home. Yeah. And if there is not a, you know, a better, I, I, for myself, having my kids and choosing to be brave for them, I could have easily accepted the VP role. Yep. I could have easily been moved back to Germany. I could have probably moved to Singapore or any of these other places. But my soul and the the needs for my kids, who now I know both of them are neurodiverse. At the time, yeah. I only knew one. Yeah. Required a level of bravery for me yeah. to, to – know that I was being the mother I yearn to be, which means yeah. I'm the type of wife I yearn to be, the type of friend, yeah. the type of professional, the type of activist, the type of all these things. Right. Whoever it is that really inspires us to step into our brave in a maybe an unexpected way or a deeper way, they are a lighthouse for our souls. Yeah. And it's crazy to think that a five-year-old could be your lighthouse, but yeah, it's, it's, it's super foundational. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Oof, good stuff. This was a very deep conversation. It was so deep. So deep. I didn't intend to make it deep, but also it is what it is. And it's Nicole squared. What are we talking about? I mean, about? Chris it's going to be amazing. What? <laughs> I literally was talking to someone the other day and they were like, all Nicole's I know are intense. And I was like, <laughs> I could second that. I could very much second that. Uh, yes. And it's it's so funny because it's also like there's almost – you need a strong force yes. to, to call a strong force, right? Mm-hmm. Like there are um, – I can – going back to the duck comment, I can put on a – a calm facade. Um, and you, you did this in almost all of our sessions. And for this one, I did tell you on my podcast, the first three months, it made me terribly uncomfortable in the best way. You would pause and make me sit in silence. And I was like, what am I? And I just keep talking. And it was like the worst thing. It took me back to when I would take work trips to Finland. The Finns were like, she doesn't stop talking. Like I just keep going and I fill the air. And uh, it's – it's the other day my daughter said to me, she goes, Mommy, can you turn on music? And I said, no, honey, let's just sit in quiet. And she goes, I hate silence. And I said, you know, Mommy hates silence too. But Mommy's coach, Nicole, told her one day that she should try to be silent for more of the day. And it was one of the hardest things Mommy had to do. But it's like sit with your thoughts and all of these challenges. I I sometimes am, am very strong willed, and I really appreciate what you brought in a non demanding right. dictatorial way, right? right. Not like yeah. go do this. I'm right. I'm teaching you. No, it was like, hey, have you ever thought of this? Mm-hmm. Like you just ask questions. I'd be like, shit. How does she know? <laughs> like how did she know to ask that? Dang. <laughs> um, but no one's asked me that before. Right. Not in the way that you had. And I think it it yeah. opens up so much. And then you just it snowballs from there in the best way possible to be like, why mm-hmm. why are you doing this? Um and, and you start asking yourself that question. And then things become super clear, maybe a little faster than you anticipate. Yes. Or, you know, significantly faster. <laughs> yeah. Um, just just real quick so that the audience doesn't get terrified. What I what I suggested was maybe be in silence for like two minutes. Just, yes. And you can move and you could do something, but you know, just allow your brain to work. I didn't tell you to sit in silence in the whole day. No, you did not. <laughs> But to me, it felt like the whole day. It's like an embarrassing thing to state as an adult. 
but with your phone on and with music oh, yeah. on. And oh, I didn't yeah. realize I'd brush my teeth and watch a show, watch TikToks. Yep. Now I brush my teeth and just brush my teeth. Yeah. And allow oh. whatever thoughts that come to my head to come to my head. Yes. And it's those little moments of clarity, of grounding mm-hmm. that that allow so much more in. So yes. yes, it was not all day. It was two minutes. And that was a challenge. <laughs> I made it out the other side. <laughs> right. And it's it's not just, you know, like for me. Now I'm speaking for me and for one of my kiddos. It's not just about letting it in, but it's letting it come up. Mm. My my kiddo, my kiddos, I, I they're very aware of their online presence. The schools here, I have to say, they do an amazing job about like social media education from a very young age. I wish they mm. would do such a good job and thorough job with sex as well. But yeah. you know, at least for social media, so they like they they insist. If I share a story about them with their name or their image, they have to give consent, oh, which I just think awesome. is amazing. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. So one of my kiddos, like the creativity that gen- – okay, I have a lot of climate people who listen to my podcast. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Okay, so the creativity is like an oil – drill thingy. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. And then suddenly there's this explosion Mm. of oil up, of creativity up from within. Mm. And that I have discovered that is very true for myself as well. When I give myself the opportunity. And, you know, for a lot of people who have been labeled intense, Mm. right? Choosing to be in silence and experience our quote unquote intensity is such a gift to ourselves and to others because we get mm-hmm. to touch into that without the judgment of other people. Oh, you ask too many questions or yes. you share too much or uh, whatever it is, right? And we get to just think, experience. Yeah. It was it was one of the areas where where you brought up and and I had said something about feeling small mm-hmm. and yeah. realizing like I have come to peace with the parts of my personality that others find mm-hmm. intense. My yes. passion, I like it. It's not for everybody. Yes. My creativity and my long rambling external processing of information and ideas and spitballing, you yes. know, my – my reference to my coworkers sometimes like, hi friends, how are you? Like <laughs> it's, I've had to learn not everyone's a hugger. Um, and some of those things you learn and you change to make yourself better. Like the hugging thing, right? Yes. I come from a family of Persians. We hug and we kiss each other. Yes. There are some people who want to share that warmth with you, but the physical touch is yes. entirely inappropriate for them and yes. is a, a trigger for them. Yeah. And so learning that made me a better person. Right. Learning to be less me in being smaller, asking, apologizing when there's not a need for apologies, that wasn't serving me. And I think that was, mm-hmm. um, I guess the last thing I'll say is the the coolest takeaway is that I was very – interested um towards towards the end of my decision making it almost felt like i had to decide uh because people were not comfortable with my directness and my challenging spirit mm-hmm. to making our product better and i thought when i gave my notice it would kind of be like deuces and like i'm leaving because x y and z and instead it was some of the most, not only peace that I felt, but when Mm -hmm. people come and talk to me, I'm not only comforting them, but also saying like, hey, if you ever need anything Um, and talking to people about, you know, you make the decisions that serve you. There's no set of campaign of like, you should do this, you should do that. There's no anger. It's just kind of calm. And I feel so at peace with such a scary, non-end-defined decision 
And I feel like if if you can feel at peace in there, that's when you know you've made the right choice, no matter what the next outcome will be. So yeah, I'm pumped. There is no better way to wrap this, to wrap this up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank it's I I will go back to y'all, it's not a scam. Uh <laughs> okay, maybe some, maybe some are scams. Oh yeah. I just maybe had my first experience where I'm like, wait, coaches just don't do what they promise. I had oh no gosh. idea. I've been getting coached since 2007. I had no idea. No idea. I'd never had that experience. But thank you, Nicole. Coaching with me yeah. is not a scam. And there no. are wonderful coaches out there. Mm-hmm. And there are amazing clients mm. like yourself. Oh, well, thank you. The pleasure has been mine, my dear. All righty. Thank you, everyone. Until next week, brave it up. Hey, before you go, you are ready to become the bravest, most fulfilled version of you. And I am ready to be your coach. I invite you to explore one-on-one coaching with me. Go to tricksteinbach.com to learn more and schedule your consultation. You can stress and work less while you live and earn more. My clients do it all the time.